<clears throat> Ever wonder how to avoid this and what uh, small dense LDL has to do with all of this? <clears throat> We've talked a few times. This is a uh, the media layer of an artery. This is the intima layer. And this is all small dense LDL that has gone through cracks in that intima layer and stopped getting stuck between the intima and media. This is what causes a heart attack our, or a stroke. Our uh, body, we take friendly fire. Our body creates inflammation here. If this leaks out and touches the bloodstream, it causes a clot. But let's go back. We're going to talk about L, small dense LDLs today. <clears throat> uh, before we do, just a brief introduction. Uh, my name is Ford Brewer. Uh, Dr. Brewer uh, <clears throat> graduated and ran the program in uh, preventive medicine at Johns Hopkins um, and have continued to do preventive medicine for three decades since then. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, small dense LDLs. Um, <clears throat> here's one of the first uh, things to look at and think about. This is uh, this is a schematic, and it's really looking more at a um, metabolic profile, what you might say. This is the liver, and it's talking about the liver making what's called VLDLs, very low density lipoproteins. As you go around this circle, you get lower, uh, you, you get smaller particles and higher density. So here you get low density, you, uh, you have intermediate in between, and then down here you have high density. One thing that I'm struggling to show you on here is that it's not just a circle. There are crossovers where high density lipoprotein can pick up a lot of cholesterol from these others and become a, a, a more of a medium density or take that, um, <clears throat> take that cholesterol back to the liver or other places to be metabolized. Now, <clears throat> there is a little bit of difference in terms of that last point about HDL uh, being converted is not actually converted. There is a, uh, a concept, and it's true, that the actual protein within LDLs and these smaller, I mean, uh, these uh, fluffier, less dense, floating uh, lipoproteins is different from the protein here. Let me step back and make a con uh, comment. You remember what lipoproteins are. Lipo meaning fats or oils and proteins meaning a protein. Uh, if we actually, if we didn't have lipoproteins, every time we ate a salad with olive oil or a hamburger, we'd have what's called a fat embolism. The fat as we, um, or oils as we absorb them would clump up in the bloodstream and kill us, just like a, uh, a stroke or a heart attack. So that's what, why lipoproteins are important. These are proteins that are made by the body to keep those fats and oils in tiny microscopic particles. So this is from my friends uh, Brad Bale and Amy Donin. Uh, they have a great course in terms of looking at inflammation, heart attack, and stroke risk. This is uh, one of their schematics where they're basically showing here's where the, the issues are. The endothelium, the lining of the artery, and the, med the media. Um, the muscle layer, which provides structure. What happens in our process that we've discussed many times is that <clears throat> endothelium gets cracks in it for one reason or another, and the small, dense LDL, that's what we're talking about today, SDLDL, small, dense LDL can go through that endothelium. Uh, usually it'll pass on through the media layer, but when you get inflammation, it, get, it stops. Things called proteoglycans hang down like, uh, like barbs in a chicken wire fence, and the small, dense LDL can't pass through anymore, so they get stuck right here between these two layers. Then again, as I've discussed many times, the inflammation process is where our own immune system takes, um, starts to take control we get what's called a friendly fire kind of uh, approach, meaning we start uh, losing from uh, our immune systems, our friends, taking, uh, we take hits from their abuse of our uh, plaque. So, uh, 
un, uh, uninflamed plaque is stable. Inflamed plaque, if it leaks into the arteries, um, it touches the blood, can cause this plaque. Most of this plaque, uh, the two, the last two uh, things, again, also came from Brad and Amy. And those are, uh, these are pictures of people that have just died from a heart attack. This is clot, not inflamed plaque. The inflamed plaque uh, went back into the bloodstream and formed a clot. The majority of this clot is broken off and killed the patient. So let's go back. So that was a lot of information. Again, just a brief review. Here's another way of looking at this family of LDLs or lipoproteins, going from the largest BLDLs to intermediates. And then this group right here is the small dense LDLs. As you can see, those of you who have LP little a or have some interest in this area, that is one of the small dense LDLs and it's got these hooks hanging off. Um, the Kringle repeats. Small, uh, HDLs, on the other hand, are very small and they can absorb cholesterol from the other, uh, other, area, other particles, other areas, and pull that back so you can uh, accomplish a healthy metabolism of it. So, <clears throat> what's the story on small dense LDLs? Well, yes, there is a test for small dense LDLs. Uh, you can get it from Cleveland Heart Lab. Cleveland's been recently acquired by Quest. You can get it from a couple of different places. Um, we test for that. And again, having an elevated amount of small dense LDLs is a significant issue. Now Cleveland, now that Cleveland's been acquired by uh, Quest, there's going to be a little bit of uh, shuffling, as we all know. But here's the thing, when you look at the test, <clears throat> on Cleveland, the small dense LDL is uh, 40, uh, and the corresponding number for Quest is called a uh, small LDL, and that's 162. So they may end up with both types of tests. They may, um, they may end up dropping one, they may end up improving both of them and ending up with a third, but it's still a, a viable test. We use it. What do you do if you have um, numbers that are higher? Well, the one thing that's been shown to improve small, dense LDL is uh, niacin. In addition, the other things that we all know help our lipoprotein status and our cholesterol status in our blood is to manage things like insulin resistance, exercise, and what's the biggest item that I don't have on here? Diet. Thank you for your attention.